Come here, Belle. Jump up. Jump up. Come on. Jump up. Jump up. Come on. Ready? That's the way. <laughs> All right. This is my wonderful dog here, Belle. Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Edwards, dentist, California, and welcome to Renews Oral, the COVID-19 version where I teach you how to help yourself avoid dental problems in this time of emergency. Uh, right now, who needs another problem, right? Nobody, especially a dental problem, uh, especially knowing that about 80% of dental problems are preventable easily. So all through my career, I've been trying to help people not have dental problems. And uh, I've, probably, I've probably seen about 68,000 patients in 34 years. I've probably only been able to really educate maybe one a week or so. And that's pretty bad, you know, because uh, uh, it it's, it's, the dental office is inefficient for education. I, I think of it this way. It's really, it, it's really nerve wracking at the office. Um, patients are nervous and worried and frustrated that their insurance didn't cover anything and the fees and, and missing work or they have to pick up their kids, they have to go somewhere, do something. So uh, nobody's ever really <laughs> super happy at the dental office. Well, I gotta admit, uh, I have made a number of people happy fixing their smiles and so forth, but I mean, in general, I mean, people don't really like uh, going to the dentist that much. And so 80% of most common dental problems are easy to prevent. Easy, easy, easy. I mean it. And uh, But you just have to know certain things. And it's not oral hygiene, by the way. And oral hygiene is really the, the most uh, dumbed-down, simplistic, uh, dangerous, actually, thing you can do. It's, it's the most minimal thing you can do. And you never get anywhere by doing the most minimal things. You always get somewhere by doing better and exceeding and giving 110% and so forth. So why would you do only the minimum for your oral health and end up having to spend money every year and fixing stuff all the time? And what's interesting is uh, basically all dentists are taught that 80% of dental problems are really easily preventable. That's why dental insurance hardly covers anything anyway, because dental insurance even knows that most dental problems are preventable, and uh, so why should they bother covering them, right? So if 80% of the problems are so easily preventable, how do you actually do that if oral hygiene is not so good? Well, here's the secret. I've been involved in fitness ever since I was a kid, climbing trees, and uh, my dad used to lift weights and used to work out together in the basement. And I uh, lifted weights with him starting in like seventh, eighth grade, seventh grade. Um, and then I got into high school and I ended up in the 300 club. That's where you bench press 300 pounds twice. So for me, fitness has been kind of part of my life, even though for a little while it did like a lot of people did in the 70s, uh, uh, took some illicit substances, uh, smoked for a while. Uh, I actually smoked until about 1994. And, uh, but you know, I never really saw myself as a smoker. And even by the, by the way, I was, I was, I was smoking, but I was still exercising. I was still going to the gym. And it's kind of funny. I mean, I would go to the gym, work out really hard. And then the gym was right, uh, next door to a brewery. And um, after sitting in the steam uh, steam room, I work out hard, sit in the steam room, sweat and everything, and then go right down to the brewery and have a beer and a cigarette, you know, and like look out the ocean. Uh, but, you know, I didn't really see myself as a smoker and I knew it wasn't really right. And so I just eventually just stopped. Um, so I'm not perfect. But and the point is that fitness has helped me uh, and a lot, and I even joined the fitness transformation, which I could show you some pictures sometimes, kind of cool. Um, I changed my body in about 90 days. It was amazing. The point is that fitness is known to, to mitigate many diseases. Even if you have diabetes, it's, it's, it's good to get exercise because that exercise can help to minimize the, the effects of diabetes. So I decided 
back in about 1994 or so, that I would apply my fitness concepts to oral health. And that suddenly opened up a whole new world to me of oral health. And prior to that time, I was trying to teach oral hygiene. And all I was doing was pissing people off, really, because hygiene is kind of uh, insulting to talk about. But when you think about fitness, let's say you meet somebody on the street you haven't seen for a while. And you say like, hey, Jane, uh, nice to see you. You're looking great. And Jane will say, like, oh, yeah, that's uh, But I, I still need to lose a little weight here or something. Jane doesn't say, uh, yeah, but I still stink and I'm still unhygienic. You know, nobody says that. Um, so people willingly and openly talk about fitness. And they're always looking for fitness ideas and tips. Um, how many fitness and shape magazines do you see in the supermarkets? Tons of them. How many hygiene magazines do you see in the, well, in the magazine racks? None. Because <laughs> hygiene is like... So then what is dental fitness, really? Well, dental fitness is the application of physical fitness uh, concepts and exercise physiology and everything that goes with fitness, like sports and nutrition and supplementation and uh, even rest and recuperation. Um, avoiding injuries, stuff like that. I mean, I see tons of injuries on teeth due to overzealous oral hygiene, where people are like, Arr, like this. If you've ever seen somebody brushing in the movies, it's like they're going, they're going like this, Arr, and they're all over the place. Uh, it'd be like working out like this. You lift up the weights and then you go like this. You know, that, that, would, be, that would be the analogy. So um, what I do is I organize uh, oral hygiene into scientific principles and so forth that are focused on fitness and everything around fitness instead of just hygiene, just clean, being clean. And uh, my analogy to that is if you go to the gym and just hang out in the shower, you're not going to get fit, you know. <laughs> and by the way, if you do dental fitness, you get clean by default. If you think about oral hygiene, what do you think about? Uh, you think about maybe brush, uh, floss, but nobody, 20% or 22% of people floss. Um, and most people would rather change a dirty diaper, screaming baby dirty diaper on an airplane in turbulence or something <laughs> than, than, than floss. So, uh, so flossing. And then um, uh, rinsing, okay, and then maybe uh, avoid sweets. Yeah, avoid sweets and... Visit your dentist twice a year. That's basically oral hygiene. So in, in contrast, dental fitness is education, motivation, supplementation, nutrition, um, personal training, and then uh, doing some exercises, and then uh, visiting your dentist um, whenever, you, you know, twice a year. For me, it's like, maybe a couple times every 40 years or something like that. <laughs> but for other people, you know, actually it should be twice a year because, you know, there's a lot more to uh, oral health than just cavities and gum disease. I mean, I've seen oral cancer and you don't want to ever see that. Trust me, you don't, you don't want to see that. And I've seen some pretty nasty stuff. So, uh, so if, it's, if it's education, motivation and so forth, how does that work really? Generally, I start with education why? Because it, dental fitness is such a new and interesting concept, and then there's, it's so vast and varied, but it's not complicated. It's just that it's super highly customizable. That's what it is. There's so many options. So, so anybody can do it. So first education, and then you get motivated, see? And um, then as you uh, begin to uh, do, learn and do some of the things, you become more motivated because you actually see the changes that are occurring, you see. And um, uh, supplementation is, is third because people make such poor nutritional choices. Um, a lot of junk food, a lot of sugar. By the way, it's hard to avoid sugar. Sugar's in lots of stuff. And it's just, just because you say you don't eat sugar doesn't mean you don't eat sugar because there's sugar in all kinds of stuff. Uh, we need to have supplementation to help to mitigate some of the problems that occur from uh, kind of a crappy diet or 
fast food diet or junk food diet or just a you know, diet in general, okay? So I have recommendations on supplements. And supplements could be fluoride, or if you don't like fluoride, or if you're against fluoride, well, it'd be xylitol. If you don't like xylitol, it's erythritol. If you don't like that, there's other stuff. Um, and uh, other supplements could be probiotics. I'm working on a probiotic strip, by the way, and there are probiotic tablets and powders. And uh, I give my dog, I give Bill a probiotic uh, powder. I sprinkle it in her water and on her food. It helps. Um, so then, so then we have you know nutrition after the supplementation. I mean, I'm not really into having uh, recipes and things like that. Uh, the thing to do would be to uh, eat, say, an anti-inflammatory diet, Mediterranean diet. So after the nutrition uh, becomes uh, the personal training part where that's where I have some videos where I show you what to do and how to do it. And um, flossing, I have some flossing and water picking. See, if you don't like flossing, there's... See, that's the thing about dental fitness. Uh, oral hygiene doesn't really give you too many choices. But uh, dental fitness, there are all kinds of choices because there's so many different ways to exercise. So then there's personal training, then there are the actual exercises. And I go over those and then um, visit the dentist. And, and by the way, I put values to each one of those things. That, and I put them in that order because education is at the top and the dentist is at the bottom. Those are the seven parts of, of uh, dental fitness. And I've organized them into a system that I call the Renews Oral Method. Renews, like renews your oral health, you know, renews oral. Uh, I put it into the Renews Oral Method. So um, that's basically it. So in the next video, good doc. In the next video, I'll get into the actual meat of the <laughs> meat, sugar. <laughs> I'll get into the actual functioning, the renews oral method. And it's, it's just mind boggling. It's pretty amazing. Um, once you see it, it will change your life d dentally. It's changed, changed mine. I mean, my goal for you would be to to not have dental problems. I'm going to help you prevent 80, like I really can't say prevent, I don't, I don't think I'm allowed to say that, but I'm gonna help you um, avoid 80% <laughs> uh, of most common dental problems.